Okay, we're back. Um, right, I'm not making a cup of tea. It's basically a secret a secret recipe of mine. Um, not so secret, I suppose, now. Um, considering I've also had it on the forum build. And it's just something that I thought, hmm. Let's see what happens. Give it a go. Um, if it doesn't work, always drink it, I suppose. Um, so, first of all, a couple of tea bags. Some boiling hot water. Leave that in there. Um, give it a bit of a bit of a stir because we want it nice and strong. Okay, and once that's nicely brewed, um, we're going to let it sort of like go semi-cold, I suppose. So um, the beauty about videos, I have to wait about 10-15 minutes, whereas you only have to wait a couple of seconds. So, um, see you in a moment, and I'll show you what I'm doing next. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Dunkin' Donut time, I suppose. Um, it's cooled down a bit now, and as you probably well know, whenever you make a pot of tea, you get a bit of scum that tends to sort of like sit on the top. So, we don't want too much of it. So, anyway, what I do is get the part, and you just basically gently roll it in and then take it out. I don't know if you saw that probably not but then again that's my clumsy video in so all we're doing is we're putting the part in and then rolling it out. Now once we've done that just put that aside to dry and as you will notice if I can get it on there and that you'll notice that bits of scum from the tea are starting to form on there. Okay, I'm going to do that with the same with the other part. Now don't forget we didn't pre-shade this but it's something obviously that you can do for when we're using the pastels. Okay, now the other reason that I tend to do this and that is that if you look on the studio scale models they seem to have this off-white um, I know with the lighting and that you can't see that but later on hopefully you will do um, the tea is basically staining staining the paint so once again let that do that let that dry um, and then we're going to be going on to the pre-shading and bits and pieces okay welcome back um, although it doesn't seem that long ago that um, you disappeared but um, it's actually quite a long time for me it's about an hour later um, Right, as you can see with the tea staining, um, the effect that it's given to the surface of the parts in preparation um, for some of the colours and bits and pieces and other stuff that we're going to be adding. Um, so out of the colours we've got the Vallejo, um, which is the foundation white. I've also got the Vallejo silver grey and I've also got the Vallejo medium sea grey. I've also got the Citadel Null Oil, which you've probably heard me all talking about quite a lot. This is for the panel lines and bits and pieces. And I've got some of my favourite chocolate here. Um, and that's purely for eating and nothing else. All right. So um, don't be worried. I'm not gone mad where in one minute I'm soaking it in tea and the next minute I'm covering it in chocolate. That's purely for me to eat. Um, got a little pot. Get a little pot ready um, for the paints. Um, I've got a brush here which is actually quite worn down um, this is what I use for my dry brushing um, and when you see me applying the paints to the surface um, you'll notice that, that, that in no way are they heavy I'm not painting them on I am in effect dry doing a lot of the brushing by drying it and wearing it in and pushing it into the gaps so um, I'm just gonna. It's all right. I'm just gonna choke on the calm, chocolate. I'm just gonna get some um, some of the colours ready. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of the grey, um, and just tiny little squirt of that, as you can see there, and a little squirt of the foundation white, as you can see there. Um, I'm not actually sure if you can see a great deal. It's just um, iPad stand isn't the best. Um, so we get a little bit of the of the grey, and then a little bit of the white um, because the actual grey it's not a 
it's not a dark grey, so we're mixing the white with the grey so that we get the colour that we want. And then, like I said, I'm not doing this as it should be, if you know what I mean. I'm showing you the techniques that I use purely so that you can hopefully, I don't know, learn from it. A um, bit more grey. You can you notice something it's very ununiformed the way that it's that it's all going on and there there is a reason for it because um, it's not it's not it's not to come out of a showroom is it and you're basically dragging the paint on and off you'll notice and this is with this type of brush. It pulls the paint, which in effect gives you some of your scratch marks as such that you can see there. Now, next, I'm going to be using the silver grey. And the silver grey, there's a lot of debate about that, whether it's as close of a match to the, the colour of the plastic that Diagostini use or not, I don't know, but... I just know that it isn't. <laughs> um, I do actually have a colour that I've matched as much as I can, and I've got a supplier to um, to match it for me, um, which I might, if you're good, let you find that out at a later date. So, but at the moment. All we're doing is we're just playing around, as you can see, with these colours, and it's it's as if it's going on dry. Okay, so you want to work it in to certain areas, the top, but you're not coating any of the dirty tea stain marks that we've left behind. Remember that you do not want you want that to sort of like stay there. So all you're doing is you're just adding it in certain areas, dry, working it in, and so forth, so that it it breaks up that uniformed sort of like I don't know uniform colour of the whiteness of it. And you'll see then that basically it starts to. take effect as such now I do waffle on a bit and then again like I said this is my first video blog so I could say a lot of it is nerves but I'm going to try and do as much so there you go um, I don't know if you can see it in the light but there's it's been given the, the silver silver grey all right um, and I'll just put that in some water I didn't bring any tissue with me actually I'll dry the brush but never mind um, it's probably why I'm going mad because I keep on sucking the ends of the brushes um, okay so once we've done that um, another thing that I tend to do is as well using the thumb once it's more or less certain dry to start working your your finger and you're rubbing the paint but you'll notice that the paint will actually tend to strip in a certain way sorry if you couldn't see that if it's too close but like I said I'm not I'm not the best when it comes to filming I do models I'm not a film expert but that might all change one day. <laughs> Alright, so you're basically going and you, if you can see you're rubbing it off. Alright, now once you've done that, give it a bit of a dust off with a good sized brush. And then you really need to allow that to thoroughly dry now so that the Vallejo is completely dry away. And then we're going to start adding some of the pastels and we're going to start adding some of the known oil as well. We will be going back to the spray booth to add some different 
um, stainless steel from Alclads that tends to basically bring out a bit more um, of how would I say a bit more of the panelling if you know what I mean um, and then we'll then give it another light dusting over oh hello we'll give it a night, night dusting over with something so um, I'll let him stay there I'm not going to kill him um, and I'll see you um, soon